welcome to the wide world of esports, a show devoted to all things esports. I'm your host, Catherine Knorr. Today, my guest is Andre Foster, tournament host for EACL. Our topic is gaming to give back, raising money for charity. Welcome, Andre. Hello, hello. Thanks for having me. Thanks for having me. I appreciate the time being here. All right. So tell me about EACL and what that stands for. Yeah, so EACL is a um, fundraising platform for nonprofits and for profits alike. Um, where they're able to connect to the multi-billion dollar esports gaming platform and fundraise through donations. Um, the gamers, like, you know, gamers are on this platform every day. They pay a subscription membership to get on our platform and game. We have uh, leagues from all the way from eight years old all the way to 55 and up. So this could be for your, your toddlers, grandma and grandpa kicking on the Xbox and play and they gained for over $25 million in prizes that we currently offer right now. Everything from vacation trips to, you know, $10,000 scholarships for school. And the great thing about our platform, even if you're a rookie, you're not the greatest gamer and you, know, you want to do it for fun, you don't want to be in that crazy competition. Even when you lose, you still have the opportunity to win $1,000 in cash prizes. So it's a pretty great system and a lot of nonprofits and churches and for-profit businesses, and especially gamers are liking it. Um, we're actually launching our first uh, micro tournament coming up in February, and then we'll be doing the big one in, uh, coming up in August. And, you know, we're going to be playing the top games like Fortnite and, you know, latest Maddens and uh, NBA 2021 or 22. And we also have a mobile gaming platform that you can play on. And it's based off of like a point system, kind of like if you go to like a Costco or a Sam's Club or your credit card. When you spend money, you get rewards those rewards points are actually redeemable for the prizes and scholarships and, you know, dinners and vacation cruises and things like that make the nature. Let's show the video. Even in the darkest of times, there are bright lights that shine, but it can be easy to lose sight of guiding lights during these challenging times. With hospitals overflowing, entertainment venues operating at a portion of capacity, and unemployment at an all-time high, Americans are yearning for human interaction and a new avenue of financial growth and they have to look no further than the gaming industry. Introducing the EACL and the UFL, the next generation of giving and engaging. The US gaming market is comprised of over 244 million individuals. The Esports Amateur Competitors League is an organized platform to support non-elite gamers. Our proprietary software will manage 12 million 16 bracket qualifying events per month with a chance to win cash and prizes for all players and age groups. All of this will culminate in the EACL UFL World Games held once a year in Las Vegas, where thousands of players will come together to compete for millions in cash and prizes. But how can you be a part of the EACL? This is where the United Fundraising League comes in. By participating in the UFL, you can tap into your entrepreneurial spirit to help financially support your community. Through fundraising events, you will not only help to grow the player base of the EACL, but you will help create a new revenue stream for nonprofits with dynamic growth potential. Together with these two platforms, you will be able to reach millions across the country to help better your community and assist those in need. The UFL is a place to give back and have fun doing it. The EACL is your new vehicle, with the UFL being the fuel it needs to help take your community to where it's always deserved to be. For more information, contact us at info at EACLglobal.com. Okay, so... I know we have way too many acronyms in our heads right now, so it's really hard to keep track of all of them. And it so is. I totally get it, Andre. So could you tell us what EACL stands for, please? Yep. Um, it says for uh, Esports Amateurs Competitors League. Um, like I said it's going to be a big league. We're looking to actually push into the Olympics. Um, because as many of you may or may not know, Esports is actually going to be a new platform that is going to the Olympics. Um, so we're definitely going to be doing a lot of um, traveling in the upcoming months and into our tournaments and competitions and getting the word out there uh, for EACL and what we can do for the community, not only our nonprofits, um, but our for-profits. And the opportunity our gamers can have by joining this platform and helping out a local nonprofit in their community. You're a busy guy. So thank you so much for being here. So tell us what you do with the company. Yeah, so what I do with the company, I'm a uh, tournament host. I help onboard uh, nonprofits and for-profits on this platform, as well as other, you know, 
potential uh, people that want to offer this platform to other nonprofits and for profits, um, as well as uh, share this opportunity with gamers and as well as platforms like this as well. So that's pretty much my main spot is just getting the word out there and helping others uh, on this platform. All right. So what is your background that led you to this company? I am actually a serial entrepreneur. Um, I own, co-own, and run over 11 different companies uh, right now. I come from a family of entrepreneurs um, over 40 plus years, if I'm not mistaken, in the city of Detroit. I've um, been doing business, so it's just in my bloodline at this point. So when I was introduced to this platform uh, through my colleague, Deborah, um, she got me on Facebook as a mutual connection, and you know we've been killing it ever since. All right. Are you a gamer? Did is that what led you partly? I am actually. I'm very avid gamer. I'm actually just getting back into the gaming space. Um, because I was raised with siblings. I'm the oldest of five siblings and uh very competitive siblings to the point where they destroy games and systems. I've lost a lot of game controllers due to children that want to destroy them and you know bash them and spill drinks on them. So I just recently got back in the uh, gaming space and uh, gonna go crazy with it this year. So definitely gonna be doing big things with it, especially with this EACL platform. Now, what uh, what is your game of choice? Oh, geez, that's a tough one. Um, <laughs> I am a gearhead, so um, I do play a lot of uh, Horizon 5. Um, I do play a lot of GTA. I try to get back into the new Halo. I'm still kind of like warming up to it because I'm very old school with the games and I like the older ones better because, you know, the classics to me. Um, geez, geez, I mean, I could really take people back with the you know, N64 games I used to play a lot as a kid and, you know, the GameCubes and PlayStation games. So I'm um, going to get back into the feel of things. Um, I just downloaded MK11 uh, a few months ago and then just dived into that again. So definitely going to hit it hard and doing some gaming and looking to make possibly doing streaming as well uh, with my game with my game yeah. yeah all right so okay if i'm a charity or a nonprofit and i'm interested in partnering with you um what do i do um you should simply uh go on our website um that the, the one i sent you the uh Wulu website um you can post it up here i can post it as a matter Oh, um, uh, we'll the, show it. We'll show yeah. it. They can go on the website. On the right hand side, there's a little menu um, where you can uh, click sign up as both a for profit and a non profit. Or if you're a gamer that wants to offer this platform with your other co competition leagues, you're more than welcome. Um, this league is going to be huge. You know, you can make tens of thousands of dollars a month with this platform, helping out your community, helping out non profits and uh, small businesses you know, strive in this situation we're doing right now called COVID. Um, and then you're also gaming for a purpose. You're gaming to help your local nonprofit and you can get, you get paid for it. You can make money with it. So why not? And you know, this is the only platform that I know of where a gamer can, you know, pay for college or, you know, grandma or grandpa can get on the platform and send their granddaughter to, you know, their vacation trip for, you know, their honeymoon, you know? So it isn't, it isn't just for charities and nonprofits. It's also, Correct. if you want to fund something yourself like you said college or whatever so yeah. you know it so who actually puts the money into the platform with the platform um our gamers pay a yearly 240 dollars membership to support the nonprofits and for-profit organizations and that gives them access into our platform game um rack up their points and then win the course the you know the 24 25 million dollars in prizes that we have uh, between different uh, vacation trips, cruises, uh, cash prizes, and of course, there's college scholarships as well. So. Do, you also, do you have uh, sponsors as well? We don't, um, but we are looking into some of those sponsors for our team. Uh, we definitely want to do some sponsors because I've been looking into places like Target and Meyer. You know, they do a lot of sponsorships and uh, gift matching. Uh, we're also looking at a corporation that will allow us to give people um, vacation trips just for helping support their nonprofit. So, look into other incentives to help our nonprofits push and thrive and um, sell their gamer cards, we call them, or donation cards, if you will, um, to help the organization grow. Because this is a platform 
that St. Jude Hospital is used, utilizing about 40 times a year, and they make about $40 million every year off this platform, going to a great cause, a similar platform. You can do great for organizations that are on this platform watching us right now. You know? So how, how long has St. Jude been on it? So St. Jude, um, I think it's since recent. It's something new that they launched recently. Um, if you go on their website, I think it's called St. Jude Gaming. I can send you the link. It's pretty interesting. I never knew that they were actually into esports gaming. And to find out that they have esports tournaments at their hospitals to benefit the kids there at the hospitals that either can't afford their bills or whatever the case may be, you know, it's going to a great cause. And I'm like, wow, hospital having esports gaming. Like, where was that? You know, when I was visiting family members or, you know, sick in the hospital, you know, they had an esports tournament downstairs, you know, it's something to do. But, you know, they're similar to what we do. They pay a membership. They come in, they game, and then their membership fees go towards the uh, hospital as a donation, which, as many of us know, is a charitable write-off. So. How long has um, EACL um, been in business? To my knowledge, I believe it's been over four years, actually. So it's been around for a while. You Pretty go on sure. YouTube, you can look up EACL. They've been at a few uh, large events. Uh, you'll be able to see them all over YouTube. And, we have all our presentations and our commercials and everything is all on YouTube. So we're definitely out there. Right. And um, so why, why do you think that this um, platform is attractive uh, to amateur gamers? Like what, what is it that uh, makes them participate? Um, well, it's, it's one of many things because, you know, you, you have the ability to give back to a cause, but also get a financial benefit as well. From it. And unlike many other gaming platforms not pushing down, they're all great in their own you know, perspective. But with our platform, which makes us unique, not only do we support nonprofits, but we give our gamers the opportunity to win $25 million in prizes every year. For just a $240 donation to a local charity organization that they support every year. You know, that seems like it makes a lot of sense because if you're going to yeah. game, you might as well game for good, right? I mean, you know, I can, because, you know, otherwise you might feel like you could be wasting time. And if you're doing something to either raise money for a nonprofit or raise money for something that you want to do, I could see that would be a benefit for people. Sure. Um, so are, it's only amateurs and pros aren't involved at all. We have everything. We have leagues from eight years old all the way to 55 and up. So your toddler, your teenager, your adults, grandma and grandpa, great grandma and great grandpa, everybody can play on this platform. That's what's great about it because, you know, you have the grandkids over, what are they going to do? They're going to go to grandma and grandpa's TV, big TV, plug up the Xbox, plug up the PlayStation, and be on the game for hours. But this platform, it allows the family to silently engage, but the grandparents to engage in the platform, be a part of the conversation, and connect with their grandkids on levels that they would never even thought. Just like the um, game, I'm pretty sure everybody's familiar with, Pokemon Go. It was solely designed to get kids out the house and get more into fitness. It's an app designed for fitness, not gameplay, for fitness. But what, it, what did it do? It blew up. It had millions of downloads. We, we had an office in the uh, Renaissance Center post-COVID, and I would walk downstairs to get lunch, and they had people of all different ages, grandmas, grandpas, you know, all with their grandkids around playing Pokemon Go, catching their Pikachus, you know. And, you know, they're like, what the heck is that? And the kid would go, oh, this, this is that, you know, this is what that is. It's a Charizard, whatever the case may be. But it, it had it, a fitness app to be able to connect grandkids to, you know, grandparents and build that bridge that they probably didn't have before. You know, you have something to connect about. Because you're going to want to go over grandma and grandpa's house, you're going to play Pokemon Go now. But now with this platform, you're going over grandma and grandpa's house, you're going to go play Fortnite with grandpa. You know, are you going to go play Call of Duty with grandma or, you know, are you going to go down the game and play Forza Horizon 5 with grandma and grandpa? And the whole time, grandma and grandpa are racking up points when they win. The grandpa could go take grandma on the nice cruise he always promised or go to Jamaica, go to the Bahamas or, you know, go on a nice vacation that they deserve. You know, yeah, or yeah. hey. We want to win cash prizes to, you know, pay our grandsons, pay part of his college tuition. You know, that connection piece is really important. Um, and I do think that 
whenever you can connect generations in gaming, yep. it's really positive. I know that um, I recently taught a course on intro to esports to yep. people over 50 at um, the Osher program at University of Hawaii. And I found that most people didn't even know what esports is. I probably should have called it intro to gaming or something because they, you know, people have to Google esports because they don't know what yeah. it is. And they don't know how big it is either. But I think, but they do see that their kids and their grandchildren are, children are playing games and yeah. want to know more about it. So that's really wonderful that, that, that this does that as well. Um, yeah. So has there been an impact as a result of the pandemic um, to the platform? Um, not really. A platform like this would actually strive through a pandemic because, you know, with people being stuck at home, what else do you have to do? The gaming industry saw a surge, as many of you know, in sales. You can't buy an Xbox. You can't buy a PlayStation. You go to your Walmart or your Myers or GameStop or Disc Replay or whatever you buy your games at, everything's sold out. Everything. The second they drop, they're sold out. It's just so bad that you go on Twitter and Instagram and follow these esports gaming platforms where they're posting about you know Walmart's going to be have a restock in Xbox. But three years ago, you can go to Walmart any day and buy an Xbox. Now you can't. You know the the PlayStation and Xboxes they're like the Chargers and Challengers of the gaming world. They're so hot right now because one because of the pandemic and two because well demand. You know the chip shortage, so they can't produce as many the point where Sony is literally remastering and remaking the PS4 again. Like it was the PS4 was due to be stopped production this year, but now they're going to kick it, kick back into it and produce more because they cannot keep up with the demand right now. One, because of the chip shortage and they got to keep the gamers engaged. So a platform like this is going to strive even better in the pandemic because people are at home. You're stuck at home with your family, with grandma and grandpa. You can't really go anywhere especially when you're quarantined for like we have been in the past for six months to a year. What else is there to do besides stream, watch TV, a game? Except for with this platform, you can make money while you're gaming. Yeah, and you know, we've seen people quit their jobs or they lose their jobs or have less yeah. to do. So, yeah. you know, people are looking for other ways to make income. Are there yeah. any does your company have any special projects scheduled for 2022? Or is, um, you know, I know the pandemic is kind of uh, causing challenges. Yeah, we have a lot of things on the books right now. Um, I'm not in, like in the executive level of sort of the company, um, but I do know we're gonna have, we have several tournaments coming on throughout the year and promotional events. Um, I know with our team, we're looking to uh, support our nonprofits and help them get these tournaments going for their nonprofit helping and making work for them so they can help grow and expand their community. Because we have a uh, church on our team um, that he actually sold out all of his required tickets and was able to have $38,000 for his church organization. And all he did was they had a little uh, vending events as most churches do. He had his vendors buy that $240 ticket to vent for the year, the church, and he just made $38,000 in one city. Wow, that's fantastic. Um, you know, so I have a question related to that. And, you know, it's yeah. kind of related to the Olympics and to yeah. nonprofits because, as you know, first person shooter games are pretty violent. And um, yeah. one of the issues with regard to the Olympics having esports is, you know, there's many issues, but one of the issues is what game do they play? Do, are, you, are they, do they just play Rocket League or? You know, I mean, I've seen lists of different games, but, you know, do you find that any nonprofits have any challenges or conflicts with more violent games? Not often. Um, but I said, the platform is up to them. Like, they don't have to play a certain game. Like, you know, for our churches, if they want to have an esports tournament, they can play 2K or Madden. You know, sure. they can play Zelda if they wanted to, you know. It's up to them. I feel old just saying the word Zelda, but yeah, you know, they can play whatever they want. They, they don't have to play, every, you know, Call of Duty Black Ops. They ain't got to play zombies, you know, for 14 hours a day. They don't have to do that. That's not what they want to do. There's several games on the platform they can play. They have mobile games. We have the e-games. I mean, 
opportunities are endless. They're, they can play any of the top games you can think of. They can select. So if they want to just do NBA 2K, they can do that. That's up to them. That's 100% up to them. We're not here to sit there and tell them that you can only play this game in the tournament. That would walk people away from this platform because we're forcing them that you only can play first-person shooters. Like this, we're, having, we're we're sponsored by Microsoft. You have to play Black Ops four days straight. That's not going to happen, especially with churches. I tell you right now, we're not going to get a church organization to have a Call of Duty festival at church. I wish, but it ain't going to happen. Not going to happen. Sure. So, what do you think the future of um, gaming for good is? I believe the future of gaming for good is we're going after these fifty thousand nonprofit fifty fifty. 50,000 nonprofits to help them uh, raise their um, fundraising goals and help them get to that $38,000 or more uh, with our platform. So that's what the future I see in this company is hitting 50,000 or more nonprofits um, and helping them out with a new way for them to fundraise. You know, that typical selling baked goods and, you know, selling clothing and having vending events, you know, it gets kind of dated. You need something new, you need something fresh. And EACL is that newness that they need because it's very flexible. You can have esports tournaments at your churches. You can have esports tournaments at your schools and colleges because they have them every day at schools and colleges. Not only because there's grant money and funding and companies that fund stuff like that, but because they have scholarships for it. Like there's scholarships for kids to do esports. Yeah, you know when I when I think of uh, or you know traditional mm -hmm. sports, like say you have your basketball team wants to go to a particular tournament on the, on, yep. you know, in another state, or if you live in Hawaii, you know, going to yep. the man is a challenge, you know, you, it might be very con consistent to have a fundraising yep. event using, uh, you know, NBA 2K, you yep. know, because I mean, it would be consistent and it would make sense. But you know, it just seems like a good way for like a nonprofit associations also to raise money. Yeah, for sure. It's consistent because with our platform, our gamers are gonna come back because every year they're gonna have twenty-five million dollars in prizes to compete for. You're not just going on another esports platform, you're competing more or less for a status. Oh, like, hey, I'm on this team, you know, we're national, we're you know, national champs, this, that, and the third, which is great. You know, I'm not, not knocking them down, but we're giving you a competition league where you can also have the same status, but you have the shot at winning $25 million in different prizes. Yeah, and sure. helping up a local charity organization in your community. Absolutely. You know, so um, I'm going to give you the last word to tell us um, how to find you. And uh, I really appreciate you being on the show. Sure, I'm, I'm glad you could have me because we love the exposure and we want to get the word out there um, for EACL to help these nonprofits because our goal is 50,000 nonprofits, organizations to help the community, to help you guys, community, the people that are here watching. Um, we want to help your community. We want to help your community strive and grow. We want to give all these scholarships for these kids to go to school because financially it sucks. I am a victim of it. I'm sure many of us here have, have seen that bill financially aided. It is not fun. And if I could be at, at my college dorm room gaming, which I was doing anyway, and be winning a scholarship, I would have done that all day long. Because that's all college kids do is game when they're bored. I do that every day when I'm bored. Um, but you know, the best way they can find us is on our website um, that was posted earlier. They can sign up today. It's free. It doesn't cost the nonprofits, for profits, anyone, anything. Um, for the nonprofits, you click, you just click sign up. Uh, you click nonprofit. You go ahead and get your information. You sign up. And you can start fundraising today. And you can literally have that $38,000 in no time. You know, you can raise this into a multi-million platform if you so chose to. This is up to you how big or small you want this fundraising to be. Uh, and if you want to offer this platform to nonprofits and uh, businesses, um, you go in that same sign-up link, and instead of clicking on nonprofit, you're going to select what's called ETS. And that's this platform where you would be start off as a tournament host like myself. And then you can be promoted into a, what's known as a celebrity host uh, when you start onboarding a uh, several nonprofit platform. All right. And Andre, thank you so much. And, you know, uh, it's unfortunate that our, our visuals aren't so good today, but, you know, that's yeah. the way it is during COVID times. We just have to deal with these um, challenges yeah. with, you know, sometimes with 
owns and technology. But um, I, I thank you very much for being here today. And um, thank you to our viewers for joining us. Make sure to tune in next week. My host will be Sam Williams, the Development Director of Amateur Esports Association. See you then.